Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to lesson 1.3 from your big ideas, page 18. We're going to continue with equations, and yes, we're going to continue to solve equations. All chapter one, all unit one, solving equations, because that's what we're going to do the rest of this year moving into algebra. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to apply what we learned to solve equations now with variables on both sides. whoop de doo da We do the same things we've been doing because we've been paying attention and listening. Our essential question, is it possible for an equation to have no solution? Is it possible for an equation to have infinitely many solutions? Well, let's find out. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, first things first. You took some notes from Big Ideas, page 20, and it said to solve mul uh, excuse me, equations with variables on both sides. What did it suit? say to do? It said, yeah, combine variable terms on one side and constant terms on the other. Then solve it. Hello! Hello, hello! What does that mean? That means to do what we've been talking about. Simplify. Because what does simplify mean? Combine like terms and eliminate parentheses. And yes, we're going to have to deal with both of those. So let's quickly go over what we talked about in our last lesson, really quickly remembering and reminding ourselves. Simplifying the equation, combine like terms or eliminating the parentheses. Two ways to combine like terms. Same side, when they're on the same side, what do we do? We use the same sign, we use the given sign, okay? If they're on opposite sides, we use the inverse operation, we use the opposite, all right? Two ways to eliminate the parentheses. Divide out the factor. We saw a little bit of that, but mostly we're going to distribute. We're going to distribute that factor across the parentheses. And of course, we're always keeping in mind everything we do. Our ultimate goal is to isolate the variable and keep the equation balanced. Hello, isolating the variable says get the variable on one side and get everything else on the other. It's all connected. If you've been paying attention, we're going to ross and roll tonight. Here we go. Solve an equation with a variable on both sides. So we see we have like terms. We have this equation, 3w plus x, 3w, excuse me, plus 6 is equal to 4w. So we have like terms. We have the 3w and we have the 4w. They're on opposite sides of the equal sign. So we want to combine them. We have to keep that ultimate goal in mind. We want to combine the variable terms on one side. We've always done that because we want to isolate it. So would it make more sense to move the 3 over with the 4? or to take the four and move it over with the three. Yeah, you're right, I heard you say it. You take the three and move it over with the four. And so since they're on opposite sides, we do opposite operations, the inverse. So we're gonna subtract three W from both sides. Okay, that leaves us with six is equal to W. Done, huh, we're done. No more to do on that one. Here we go. Once again, you know, hopefully you're listening, paying attention, and then you pause the video to write it all down. I'll remind you after this. Here we go. Solving 5C minus 15 equals 2C plus 6. Go ahead and put everything down. Listen, pay attention. Here we go. So we recognize we have a 5C and a 2C. Mm, okay. And then we have a 15, a negative 15, excuse me, and a positive 6. Okay. Does it make any difference at all which side we put the variable on? Nope, I'm just going to tell you, most people are comfortable with the variable on the left side. So most people would move the 2 over. Most people move the 2 that way, we take the negative 15 and we move it that way. And if you mark your equation like I'm marking it, it helps you remember before you even get started. It makes it simple. And since once you, once you, once you have it 100% down and you understand it, you won't even be marking anymore. All right. So the inverse of this would be to subtract 2c from both sides. So what do I have? I have 5 minus 2, that's 3c. Okay, and then I'm going to add the 15 because I'm going to move it to the other side. And so 3c is now equal to 21. I have my simple equation. All I have to do now is do the inverse to isolate, divide by 3, that's the opposite of multiplying by 3. Do it to both sides to keep the equation balanced, and c is equal to 7. Done. Pick up your stuff, write it all down, join me for example three. Example three says solve 4s minus 1 equals 8 minus 2s. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to look. And we have a 4s on this side, 
and a negative 2s on that side. Please remember, if I haven't told you enough, I haven't really said it a lot in the videos, but I've said it in class, the operation that precedes the term is part of the term. So that negative or uh, subtracting 2s really means it's a negative 2s, okay? All right, so we always like to move our variable to the left side, and you don't have to, you can if you want. So I'm gonna add 2s to both sides, and I get 6s, all right? And I also notice that I have this negative one. Since I moved the S to this side, I'm gonna move that negative one to the other side and combine it with the eight. The opposite of that is to add one. So that means six S is equal to nine. All right, finalizing it, we have a simple equation. We're gonna solve it by doing the inverse operations to isolate the variable S, dividing by six, doing it both sides to keep the equation balanced using properties of equality, which says I can divide both sides by the same non-zero number, and I will get an equivalent equation. So S is equal to three halves, or one and one half, or 1.5. I, at this point, don't care how you write the answer. I care that you recognize that there are multiple ways of writing that answer, okay? So that no matter how it's, you, it's asked to be written, you can do it, all right? Moving, uh, pick up your stuff, pause the video, and get this one done. Join me for example four. Thank you for joining us for example four, solving six times the quantity four minus x is equal to two x, and once again, we see, we see those parentheses. So now we're gonna to continue to simplify by eliminating those parentheses. And the most common way that people, way people are most comfortable with is to distribute. So I'm gonna take the six times four and get 24. Six times a negative x gives me negative six x is equal to two x. Now, we like to move the variable to the left, but again, that's not going to make sense this time. When we see these like terms, this negative 6 here and the 2x there, if I move the 2 over, then I'm putting everything together on one side. That's not isolating the variable. So I'm not going to do that. I recognize that I want to get the variable on the opposite side of the 24, so I'm going to move the six, negative 6x to the other side by adding 6x to both sides. And I get 24 is now equal to 8x. And I recognize, I can, I, from here, I just divide by 8 to isolate the variable, divide by 8 to keep the equation balanced, and I get 3 is equal to x, or x equals 3. Either one is correct. Go ahead and pick up your stuff, write it all down, and join me for example 5. And thanks for joining me in example 5. We're going to solve this equation. It looks kind of crazy. It's really not. You just got to be calm, relax, don't stress. Everything is the same. You just follow what we've been doing, the same procedures, and everything works out just fine. So we're going to solve the six times this quantity of 1 plus 1 half x is equal to two times the quantity of x plus 1. So the first thing we need to do is eliminate the parentheses. That's what we're going to do. We're going to simplify. We're going to eliminate these parentheses. just going to get rid of them. So 6 times 1, that's 6. 6 times 1 half, that's 3. So 6 times 1 half x is 3x. We're done with that side equals 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 1 is 2. Already it looks a lot more manageable, simply by eliminating the parentheses and doing what we know how to do. Now we take a look. We're going to combine like terms. We have a positive 3x, a positive 2x. Most people like to move the variable to the left, so I'm going to move the 2x to the other side by subtracting 2x, and I'm going to get x. And then we have one more to do. We have the six that we're gonna combine with the two, so we're gonna move that six over there. We're gonna subtract six from both sides. And we have x is now equal to negative four. Nothing left to do. We're done. Go ahead and pick up your stuff. Write it all down after you pause the video and join us for the quick write. Our quick write today is two problems. Please make sure you write them down and then solve them. Take a quick break, take a snack, and then come back and join us to finish off your time tonight. Thank you.